This is your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Friday, December 27. Ten Barbadians have made the Queen's 2020 New Year's Honours list. They include a wide cross-section of professionals in the legal, sports, education, business, communication and medicine. West Indies cricketing great Gordon Greenwich will be awarded the Knight Commander of the Order of St. Michael and St. George. Three people will receive the Order of the British Empire, Professor Velma Newton for her outstanding contribution in the field of legal education, Sister Margarita Marshall for her outstanding contribution to the development of local gospel music, and Ben Arundel for his work in international business and the private sector. Here is the full list of the awardees. All is set for a grand opening of Regathering 2020 in the Parish of St. Lucie on January 1. Today, officials held a press conference at River Bay, the site for the event. Coordinator of Regathering 2020, Salma Green, says the event will yield big benefits for the island, stressing that it is intended to deepen the connection between Barbados and its diaspora. The benefits we intend to realize are increased investments in projects, infrastructure and services, greater number of visitors coming to Barbados and increased visitor spend, the development of new sectors and economies, and increased economic opportunities. Member of Parliament for St. Lucie, Peter Phillips, told journalists at the iconic traditional site for family picnics that during 2020, the Northern Parish would focus on families, achievements, institutions, talent, and heritage, starting with families getting together for fellowship, food, and fun. As we move through the month, Faith will be at the center of our parish activities, which will be spearheaded by an ecumenical service on January the 5th. And please know it is now at 8 a.m. and not at 3 p.m. It is now at 8 a.m. at the St. Lucie Parish Church. We will honor the achievement of the people of St. Lucie with an award ceremony on the 20th of January. St. Lucie is leading the way in a year that is truly momentous, January 21st will be the centennial of the birth of the right excellent Errol Walton Barrow, who is from St. Lucie, in case you don't know. And we will honor him with the unveiling of a plaque on the 21st of January at the Garden in Chaka Hall, and then a super concert in Chaka Hall later in the day. We will feature and support our local community institutions, showcase our parish talent, and tour several heritage sites. Meanwhile, Director of Marketing at the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc., Robert Chase, says regathering is expected to attract even more tourists to the island. He says every effort is now being made to ensure there's adequate airlift. And the uh, task that we have at hand is to make sure that we have adequate airlift so that we do not end up crowding out our regular visitors and rather simply see a substitution or a cannibalization of our regular traveler um, with the diaspora traveler in the summer period. Because that can be a time when, particularly summertime, um, when the number of seats available and the cost of seats can be a challenge with our partners. The critical situation here is for us to convince the diaspora to book early. The more we can get them to book earlier, the more our partners see that activity on board in terms of the demand for it, the greater opportunity there is for us to then uh, convince them to add the seats that we require to achieve the objective. In sports, England-based sportswear company Castor will become the official team kit partner for all representative West Indies teams after signing a three-year deal with Cricket West Indies. The brand partnership will make its debut next May when West Indies women take on South Africa in a one-day international series. There's regional and international news after this short break. Festive Friday at the Bridgetown Night Market at Pelican Craft Center. Kick off the weekend this Friday from 4 p.m. to midnight with loads of food, drinks, and entertainment. Get ready for crop over with the Rhythm Roots Street Parade. Party like it's Kadooman Day on the street around Pelican Village with costume reveler, music, and more. It's Festive Friday. It's Festive Friday at the Bridgetown Night Market at Pelican Village Center from 4 p.m. to midnight. Admission free. <laughs>
Barbados Today, news you can trust. On the regional scene in Jamaica, things are improving for homeless people across the corporate area. At a recent Christmas tree, Chairman of the St. Anne's and Municipal Corporation, Delroy Williams, gave an update on efforts made to assist the vulnerable group. For past months, there have been growing concern about the safety and the provision of assistance for the homeless. This homeless man sums up his experiences. It's rough, you know. It's rough. Because when you don't know, have anything and you don't know, have a work or a job or whatever, it'll be difficult for you. But according to Mayor of Kingston, Delroy Williams, there have been significant improvements over the last year. At a Christmas feeding program at the Mary Atkins Night Shelter on Wednesday, Mr. Williams listed some of those changes. When we were here last year, you would remember that we had about we were we had accommodation for approximately 80 persons. Um, today we are up to 102, and so that is an is an improvement. In addition to the increased accommodation, the Mary Atkins Night Shelter has also been improved to provide bathroom amenities. On the international scene, 12 people were killed and dozens injured when a plane with nearly 100 passengers and crew on board crashed soon after takeoff. More in this report from Reuters Television. Heartbreak. Dozens have been killed or wounded when a passenger jet crashed soon after takeoff in Kazakhstan on Friday. Local authorities say the plane, operated by Kazakhstan's Beck Air, was carrying almost 100 people. Some of those hospitalized are in grave condition. It's not yet clear what caused the incident, but the country's Civil Aviation Authority says the plane, a Fokker 100 airliner, lost altitude and crashed through a concrete fence and collided with a two-story building. It took off before dawn heading to the capital, and initial reports say the aircraft's tail may have touched the runway. A Reuters reporter on the ground also reported heavy fog in the area. Kazakhstan's government is saying that the victims and their families will receive state support as they grieve. All Fokker 100 jets in Kazakhstan have been grounded while an investigation gets underway. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. Have a fabulous weekend.